Fountain Square, the people have a voice too. I think it's awful. I don't think you need them. I think it's awful. I don't need them in town. A guy with a rubber head who had a head injury and he's acting like this? Do you know how many people are out there that, that are like that? You think that that's funny? What the fuck is funny about that? I think it's funny, you know? The lesbian chick, older lesbian girl going after the younger lesbian girl. That's funny because, you know, she's acting up on TV. She, you know, she chose to do that. The guy in the rubber wig, you know, the guy that's got the head injury, he didn't choose to hurt his head. And we were going back and forth and back and forth. And then finally, I started going in the oncoming traffic lane. I told you about Mike Monterazzo, you know, who passed away. We all had some good times uh, at Gold's Gym, some fond memories of Mike. Um, in 1991, I actually did, uh, I did a big thing for St. Jude's Hospital. All right, I was with my, it's actually was by my boy Bob Bonham, was one of the promoters. But we had Bill Kazmaier, uh, Sandy Rinaldi was there, who's now Sandy Wilkerson or Williamson or whatever. She's the head of the women's IPB. Um, Kevin Lavrone, Franco Colombo, Denise Rutowski, Linda Murray, Mike Matarazzo, uh, oh my God, uh, do a boxer. Ronaldo Snipes. There was a lot of, there was a lot of body, and it, it was like an expo, you know? There was a female bodybuilder who was friends with Bob. Her name was Maro Pachakian, and uh, she was a good female bodybuilder back in the, in the 80s and maybe early 90s and stuff. And uh, she was with another bodybuilder named Tony Best. And I remember that Franco Colombo was like hitting on her to the point where Tony, who was also, not only was he jacked, but he was a martial artist. and. Uh, he was gonna kick Franco in the head. Cause Franco, dude, I mean, he sees girls and he's like, eh, eh, eh. And Reggie Jackson was like that. I don't know if I told you that story already, but I was in Gold's Gym in, in uh, 1981 with Reggie Jackson. And every, he would be working out. And we did shoulders together, Reggie and I. Uh, we were on a, a, a Nautilus machine once. And I remember every time a girl would walk by, he would like, he would turn and he'd whistle. And, he, and I, I actually was like, dude, don't do that shit in front of me. Like that's embarrassing because they think it's me, you know? But anyway, uh, Franco Colombo was really bad. He was really bad with that. And um, I remember he used to, he would, he, he, part of his show was he would blow up a hot water bottle. But he had a little ring, a little razor blade. A little thing stuck out like this. So when he would blow it and it would pop, it's because he would pop it. It's a ring. People don't know that shit. Just people out there go, no, no, no. He blew it up and it popped on his own. No, it didn't. He used the ring. Okay, he used to pop it with a ring. I was there, I know. I was backstage, I wasn't in the audience, I worked the backstage. So, a big limousine used to come, it was a big stretch limo with all these, you know, and it came and it, it was what brought all the pros there. Now I drove my own car there because I was promoting the show, co-promoting it with Bob Bonham. Bob Bonham was the promoter. I was helping, I was assisting, okay, I wasn't. I didn't, uh, you know, like back then I, was, I used to promote for the NPCs and all that shit. Anyway, so a lot of, you know, the, all the pros all came and they all, you know, they, they got in a limo that took them to the hotel and to the place. So when Franco Colombo was done, it was the coldest day of when, it was like January or something of 91. It was a very, very cold day. And I remember that Franco Colombo got in a limo just as the show was ending and told him that everybody else had a ride to go. And the limo stranded everybody. I know I had Linda Murray. I had uh, my friend Dana Capabianco, who is also a female bodybuilder. You guys, some of you guys might know her. Uh, my friend Lenny. In the front seat, I had three people in the front seat with me. In the very back, I think I had Bob Bonham. I might have had Kevin LeBron all the way in the back. Linda Murray was in there. In the, in the front seat, I had Mike Matarazzo. Sitting in between me and Mike Matarazzo was Sandy Rinaldi, who's now Sandy Wilkerson, or whatever her name is. Anyway, so now I'm driving, and I'm kind of a little bit all over the road, and Matarazzo's like, yeah, keep your eye on the road. So we start talking, he's laughing and everything, and Matarazzo tells me, bro, I just saw the funniest fucking thing last night. I was watching Howard Stern. He goes, I fucking love Howard Stern. So Howard had a rubber wig on his head, right? And he was saying that um, Robin would ask Howard like crazy questions and stuff. So how did, well, I would do this. And he, you know, Howard was like acting like that, right? 
So I told Matarazzo, I, well, I like this one. They had this one where he had lesbian dial a date. You know what I'm saying? Uh, no, I'm not not lesbian dial, lesbian dating game. And he had on a really, uh, you know, like young lesbian girls, and he and he had on this older woman, and she wanted to pick which, and she was like really excited. She was like, oh my god, she's so fucking hot, you know. And like she was saying about you know this other lesbian girl, right? About the younger lesbian girl. And Monterazzo goes to me. He like, he was laughing and laughing. All of a sudden he stops. I don't get it. What's funny about that? And I said, you know, it was a lesbian dialogue then. I said, I, I said you had a, a lesbian dating game. I said, you had to see the way this older woman was so into this younger chick. You know what I mean? You had to see it. It was like, you know, just like an older guy was into a young girl. And he goes to me, yeah, but I, I don't think that that's funny. And I said, well, you don't think that's funny, but a guy with a rubber head who had a head injury and he's acting like this. Do you know how many people are out there that, that are like that? You think that that's funny? I said, I don't think that that's funny. I think that the lesbian dating game is funny, but I don't think that the rubber head is funny. And he goes to me, well, I don't think, he was, getting, he was almost getting worked up. He goes, well, I don't think that that's the, I said, do you have a sister that's a lesbian? He said, no, and that's none of your business. If it was, and he go, I, I said, well, what are you getting so worked up about? I said, it's a fucking, and we were like two fucking momos going back and forth. And Sandy Rennell was like, okay, relax, re relax. And I'm going, no, but, but what's funny about a fucking head injury? What the fuck is funny about that? I think it's funny, you know? The lesbian chick, older lesbian girl going after the younger lesbian girl. That's funny because, you know, she's acting up on TV. She, you know, she chose to do that. The guy in the rubber wig, you know, the guy that's got the head injury, he didn't choose to hurt his head. And we were going back and forth and back and forth. And then finally, I started going in the oncoming traffic lane. And Sandy Rinaldi screamed, so I get right back into the lane. We got to the diner. And I remember, this was uh, uh, really not long before. I think he went for the Arnold Classic. I think it was the Arnold Classic he was going. And he was two weeks out. Bro, he ate two twin cheeseburgers with, I believe, French fries. I'm not 100% positive. I, I, Pretty sure I remember eating French, and he had a beer. And I remember that Vince Taylor had a, was eating it as soon as he got in there. He, he, I, I gotta have something, and he ate a, a powdered donut. I remember that. I remember that very well. So I'm thinking, like, dude, you're eating a fucking, you know. So we still kind of argued a little bit more because I started asking, bro, you're gonna eat a fucking burger, and you're gonna go for a show in a couple of weeks. He's like, don't worry about it. You watch. I'm gonna fucking look great, you know. So anyway, but. That was a, a, another little Mike Matarazzo fond memory of mine. You know, even though we kind of argued a little bit, you know, we had fun at the St. Jude thing because I remember he would lift up his fucking pant leg and I was like posing by his calves and shit, you know, and we were like, we were mocking around. We were having a good time, you know. It, it, you know, we all had a great time at the diner. Kevin Lavrone is always funny. He's good. He had that dry wit about him. You know, it was, we had a great night, but that, but that Franco Colombo missed getting his ass kicked really bad because if he picked on the wrong girl. Her, her husband was no joke, you know? Anyway, so I just figured you guys would like that story. It was, a, it was just another one of those, you know, uh, many little tricky nights. I was around a lot of, a lot of good, good people in a, in, a, in a good time. Bill Kazmaier was a monster. I mean, Ronaldo Snipes too, bro. I seen him fight. I was at uh, ringside. Uh, I forgot who he fought. But uh, dude, when that dude hit, it was like it was like taking a baseball bat and fucking hitting a tire. It was, you know, never get punched by those heavyweights like that. But anyway, one more time, I'd like to give Mike Monaraz a big rest in peace. You know, he was a good guy. Like I said, he did this for St. Jude's Hospital, and uh, you know that's always a good thing in my book. Cause any, anything with kids, where you help kids, in my book, you're all right. So, rest in peace, Mike Monaraz. Thank you.